What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Phase 6, your source for music, business, motivation, and support. It's your boy, Sir Love, and today we're going to talk about why record companies send crazy contracts to artists. Are they trying to rip you off? Are they trying to steal you? Is it malicious intent? We're going to talk about it. Phase 6, let's get it. All right, guys, now let me hop right into it like I always do. So the kid came to me with the contract. Now, this guy has a nice local movement. I'm in Atlanta. I've seen the guy moving in the city, whatnot. He's seen my videos. Dude has a great movement in the city. And the people that sent him this document have a history of breaking some dope acts um, in this city and other cities. I don't want to put their name on blast because of the nature of this contract. I don't want them to sound crazy. I don't want them to lose business down the line over the course of this video. But the people that were coming at him were very established. They have a series of hit records and things of that nature under their belt and artists that have had success. Now, this local act is coming up in the city doing this thing, working this particular act. It's not very concerned about having this long career in the music business. And they're not trying to be the greatest person ever. They just really want to make their money and have fun doing it. And they're cool with that. They're cool with even being a one hit wonder, which is crazy for some artists that really love and are passionate about this to hear. But I just want to map out the story so you guys understand the context of this agreement and what was slid across the table so this uh, record company saw this uh, it's an indie company this indie company saw uh, this act out there doing this thing and they wanted to support the act uh, they wanted to be a part of it they wanted to be a part of the business so they offered a record deal to this individual um, and, I, and I'll tell you this when I read the record deal at first it was a slap in the face I kept reading it was a punch in the face I kept reading it, it became sexual assault. I kept reading, I was like, yo, this is Don Wright rape. I didn't think, it, I was on page four and it was already rape. By the time I got to page 10, they couldn't find any other holes to put it in. And it was in every hole I could possibly believe. I was like, oh my God, I haven't seen a contract this freaking crazy. So I asked the guy, I said, yo, tell me the story. Like what, what, what did they tell you? How, how, how did this go? And so he told me, they said, listen, you know, I'm just, you know, we just want to make sure that we're cut into the situation. You know, we love this one particular record that you did. And we want to make sure that, you know, we're not cut out the deal if it was to pop off. But he ended up in a, you know, the contract was completely different. It was a four album deal, 360 deal with uh, co-publishing and all sorts of other things involved in it. And it was a big, big thing. Um, and I explained this to him and it was, it was a little heartbreaking for him. But I had to explain what I'm getting ready to tell you guys right now is that Negative contracts does not mean that the person does not care about you. It does not mean that the person is not interested in being a part of you or your career, okay? What it basically means is this. Record companies understand a few factors that are very important. Factor number one. If the record company comes in and offers you a great, amazing deal, and you go out and get a great, amazing lawyer, so I'm saying they give you a, a, a deal that's right in the middle, perfect for you and them to split, right? You go out and get an amazing lawyer and your lawyer is going to push to make the deal better because that's their job. And so now that line is going to go from the middle over this way towards you. And they're going to begin to take a loss because they decided to be nice up front. So one thing that the label is going to do is they're going to start the deal over here. They're going to present you with something really, really negative just so that you can get your attorney to come in and she can or he can help move the needle closer to the middle and you can get an agreement. All right. Labels have lost a lot of money by trying to be nice up front and getting screwed on the back end, i.e. Master P. How much money did the labels lose? We all talk about Master P. We know that he's an independent king. This dude got a, he, he got the 80 percent of all money that was made on his deal. It was like like. I'm not even going to go into his deal. That's a whole other video. Look it up. Master P had an amazing deal, made crazy money, busted his ass, created a great situation for himself. Right. But the label took a crazy loss. They should have been partners. They should have, it should have been more even. They took a loss. So they know if I give you something too good, I don't want to lose if your lawyer pushes it over here. So how about we start the deal over here and then you negotiate to the middle. Now everybody can be happy. That was the vision. So that's one reason that labels give you fucked up contracts. Number two, the more factors, the more possibilities. Understand this, when a label sits down and negotiate with you, they have a couple things in mind that they want. They may want your masters, they may want your publishing, they may want 
you know, whatever. With copyright ownership, they may want record sales. I mean, at the end of the day, everyone wants everything. Like they may want certain things, but in their mind, they know that they're willing to give up certain things. There are certain things that are more important than others. Some labels and situations have a stronger handle over publishing and they want that because their business, their internal structure knows how to do that well. And they know they can make more money off of that. Other labels, are, they, they, they want, you know, the 360 they want the shows they want this because their system is good at doing that you know it just depends on what their strengths are that'll let you know what's important to them okay the more factors that you put in the situation the more possibilities that are going to come up and the more money it's going to be for negotiation for example let's say you had a team like myself i have a team you have a team of people that you want to put on let's say the deal is negotiating 360 publishing record sales and uh, let's just leave it at that, keep it simple, right? Because normally they might do separate merchandising, whatever, okay? Those three factors, and then you say, but my team is important. Well, they'll say, let's raise these other factors. If you want your team involved, if you want us to guarantee your team salaries and this and that and the third, then I want more of these things because this is what's important to us. And so then you'll find yourself in a situation where you go, is my team more important than my publishing? Is my team more important than my masters? Is my, like, it gets really funny, it gets really sticky. And this is where teams sometimes take a loss. Like artists make decisions and leave their people out there. But why do you have to do that in the first place? It's all negotiation. You may decide creative freedom and creative control is more important. And that you're willing to sacrifice your team or, you know, publishing or whatever other factor to have more creative control. To say, you can't make me cut my hair. You can't make me choose what type of music that I want to do. You can't do this. You can't do that. At the end of the day, whenever you're negotiating, whatever is important to you is going to be leveraged against what's important to the other person on the other side of the table. That's another reason that sometimes artists get bad contracts because you may fight to say, I want full creative control. The label may say, we have a history of doing this. And we know that this doesn't work because we tried it with this artist, this artist, this artist, and it didn't work. And you may say, I'm not those artists. I know it's gonna work with me. They're gonna say, we don't believe you. If you believe in yourself, bet on yourself, give us this and we'll give you that. And you gotta make that decision. And that's another reason why contracts can get crazy. The possibility of options. Number three is gonna be the money. The money, the money, the money, the money. Now we all like to talk about the money. It sounds cool. So-and-so got a $5 million record deal with so-and-so, right? That sounds cool. But the money, how much money is gonna be allocated to your project, right? Are we talking, you know, a million? Are we talking a couple hundred thousand? Are we talking a couple millions? What are we talking when it comes to your project? This is important in your negotiation because honestly, anything that you're giving on your advance, even though we all know an advance is dead, it's all recoupable, blah, 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 blah. Watch my videos on recoupables. I talked about it with Pac. I talked about it with New Edition. I probably talked about it with other videos. Like, but at the end of the day, your advancement is something that you have to pay back. However, if you flop and the label never makes their money back, you get to walk with that money. Let's say you get a five hundred thousand dollar advance you flop and you say bump it i'm just gonna go live my life there's no fdic that's gonna fuck up your credit your credit is just fine you know like there's no loan shark that's gonna come and break your legs like it's oh like you got away with five hundred thousand your label just took a loss they take the ultimate risk by giving you money up front so how much money is given up front is also going to influence how good or bad your deal is so you might come into the situation take a big large sum up front and it's, it's crazy that, so now you now that you got all this money up front, they took all this risk, they're gonna want more on the back end of the ownership of those other different things, but the money you took up front was in advance, so you just lost everything. Even though you got this 500 up front, you gotta pay that back, and now you gotta, you know, you're losing money in all these other different areas. Taking so, a lot of money up front could be the cause of why you're not getting what you need to get out of your deal, you know, because the label is taking a risk. If you flop, you came up, they lost. If you win, you lost, they came up. Be careful with the money, the money can get funny. Number four is options and the slow leak. Listen here, man, guys, when you're, when you're negotiating, understand there's a slow leak a lot of times. And I'm slow leak, I'm talking about that trickle down from the top, you know what I'm saying, economics when it comes to your bread. So you might sign an agreement, but understand your money doesn't come in the increments that you wanted to come in at the time that you wanted to come into, and you're probably gonna sign option deals. So even though you think you're signing for one song, they may have the option to pick you up for four albums and have control over when you release those four albums so you did one song you thought it was cool you dropped the album 
you know what I'm saying? Everything's 100, everything's gravy. You're not worried about nothing else, but the album did good. Now they want you to do another album. They're pressuring you to do another one. And you have to do it with them because they can pick up the option. An option is the ability for the other person on the other side to decide, do I want this to continue or not? And you have no say so if you sign it. The slow trickle down of the option. Once you created success, maybe you were supposed to be a one hit wonder, but oh crap. You're not, you're amazing. You didn't know you was gonna be this amazing. So maybe you really don't wanna be the, the, the amazing rapper, but you became that person. Well, now they got you locked in for however many options you have. So be careful about these options in the situation. There's a lot of things to watch when you're looking at contracts. A lot of things to watch. But one reason I want to talk about it is because I was literally editing this document earlier today. I had to relax. It's later on at night. I know I got these bright lights on me. You can't see that it's nighttime. I'm on chill mode at the moment. But I wanted to talk to the people because I know a lot of you guys may be signing and seeing things slide across your desk and you want to get clarity on what's going on and what's popping. I'm letting you guys know some things that you need to put into consideration there's a whole lot more to think about and it's really a case-by-case -case scenario I mean I look at documents all day um, from you know all sorts of different people and um, you know if you're about that life and if you're involved in those type of situations you know where your boy is www.phasevi.com you know there's a whole messaging section where you can reach out um, I appreciate you guys for watching this listen I don't know everything but I know a lot about a little and a little about a lot. And when I step in front of this camera, I'm just trying to give you guys everything that I got. And I wanted to vent just a little bit. I'm trying to be nice about it, about some of the things that I saw today. I don't know what it is about this season, but right now, you know, there's the sharks are in the water. So I need you guys to be careful at throwing chum out there, all right? It's your boy Sir Love on Phase 6. I'll catch you guys next time. Come on